Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the Shet Audio Azure Power Amplifier. Uh, the name Shet Audio should be uh, quite popular by now amongst uh, audiophiles. This company is from California and it has uh, been pumping out products for very reasonable prices at very high performance. Um, Shit Audio, I think, started about uh, 10 years ago by Jason Stoddard and Mike Moffat. Uh, these two names, uh, these two guys have been, um, they are big names in the industry. And uh, they have been, they started putting out DACs and uh, high quality headphone amplifiers. And now, for a while, for a couple of years, uh, they have been pumping out some really good amplifiers as well. So, the this power amplifier, Aegir, I think that's how you pronounce it, A-E-G-I-R, based on uh, some Norse mythology that I'm not quite familiar with. Um, uh, but I think it's based on, the name is comes from a uh, uh, sea god or a sea giant, or something like that. So, um, it's anything but a giant, the uh, case work at least, uh, very uh, compact, chassis, very well built, all made in the USA, uh, quality casing, quite heavy, uh, and watch out for the sharp pins, uh, sharp fins for cooling. The specialty about this is that this is a class A amplifier for up to 10 watts and the uh, marketing that shit uses is that uh, as they call it the continuity which is extending the benefit of class A sonics um, beyond the 10 watts and into all specified ratings of the amplifier which is uh, 20 watts at 8 ohms 40 watts at 4 ohms and uh, if you use this as a bridged two um, mono blocks, they output as much as 100 ohms, uh, 100 watts at 4 ohms. So that's quite impressive. And all at class A like sound. So, looking into what they mean by class A, it is uh, essentially class A sound without some of the drawbacks uh, of high heat at those higher outputs. Now, that's not to say that this runs cool. This does not run cool. Um, if you put your hand over the unit, it gets it's pretty hot, but not so hot that you flinch your hand away. Um, definitely not as hot as some of the uh, tube amplifiers I have. Uh, that use KT150 watts or KT150 uh, tubes or KT88 tubes or even EL34 tubes. Uh, doesn't run quite as hot as that. Um, it requires a modicum amount of uh, ventilation. Um, so it's good that way. But um, the other specifications of this unit would be a very impressive signal to noise ratio. Uh, quite high at 112 dB. Um, the other things is uh, the input impedance. Uh, unbalanced is 22 kilo ohms. Um, that's that's important if you're planning to use a tube preamplifier. Tube preamplifiers typically have higher output impedance. And when you're trying to match a pre-amplifier and a power amplifier, you have to take note of the output impedance of the pre-amplifier and the input impedance of the power amplifier to have a matching gain structure so as to not uh, clip the signal as soon as it gets into the power amplifier at lower volumes. So this being 22 kilo ohms um, input impedance, uh, the tube amplifier I used, the output impedance of the tube preamplifier I used was 3 kilo ohms. So 
uh, this input impedance is about seven times that 22 kilo ohms if using single ended so that wasn't a problem at all it drove the amplifier without uh, any levels of clipping so that was um, quite compatible now just to show you a little about the back of the unit it's very simple right you have uh, left and right speaker connection terminals uh, your single-ended inputs left and right this here is the balanced connection for a um, for running it as a monoblocks two units and uh, they do say that the output is increased to 80 watts at 8 ohms and 100 watts at 4 ohms and the continuity uh, that they trademarked, that Ishid Audio has trademarked, is that um, the uh, Class A-like sound is available uh, at these specified outputs, uh, power outputs as well, which is quite impressive. Quite impressive for an amplifier that's made in the USA. In fact, they say even the uh, case and the transformer is just made um, almost locally to where the factory is in California um, all for 800 USD uh, of course there is a little bit of shipping uh, they do offer you a 15 day uh, return policy uh, in case uh, you are not happy with the sound uh, read up their website uh, they have a great sense of humor and there's also quite some information available on each of their products under their FAQ section. Um, I must say, I'm a big fan of these guys. Uh, so, what else? Uh, now, let's go on to the listening section of this uh, video. Okay, so listening impressions. Um, I used a tube amplifier, like I said, uh, and I used uh, mainly, I was listening to mainly my uh, vinyl collection to evaluate the sound. So the first thing uh, when I installed this amplifier and started playing music right out of the box, right out of the box, first thing I noticed was transparency, a very clear, very clear sound at all frequencies, all the delicate details and the slam uh, across the frequency range was present immediately. Uh, no burn-in, no break-in. It was immediately um, apparent that the the clarity was immediate. Dynamics were immediate. Um, sound stage width and depth. Uh, it brought out the capability of the speakers uh, that I matched it with. So I matched it with uh, my high efficiency Pi speakers, the four Pi model. I'll provide you a uh, link. Uh, and the photos of the speakers. They're 98 dB efficient and they are pretty much a benign constant 8 ohm load uh, average 8 ohm uh, nom uh, nominal impedance. Um, I use those speakers in a very large room. Uh, this room's about 33 by 30 feet and with 10 feet ceilings. So that is almost 9,000, 10,000 cubic feet. Um, and like I said, this is specified as a uh, true class A to about 10 watts and class A like to about 20 watts at 8 ohms. I never found it lacking in power. Um, never ran out of gas. It had so much punch and dynamics. Uh, let's uh, let's let me share some of the music I played so um, so I can describe the sound. So this is starting to become my um, go-to demo um, piece here. We get requests. This is the Oscar Peterson Trio. Uh, this album is an Analog Productions release. It's a 45 RPM double album, beautifully pressed, uh, mastered from uh, original tapes, 
and uh, they're in side uh, two, which is uh, disc two. Uh, first track is uh, "You Look Good to Me." Man, this is uh, the uh, the sound reproduction through the through the shit Asia was simply beautiful and breathtaking. Uh, Oscar Peterson is one of my favorite pianists, along with uh, Bill Evans or Ramsey Lewis. Um, and usually, um, Bill, uh, Oscar Peterson's notes sometimes fly all over the place. Not in this album, definitely not in this song. It's very intimate. It is uh, is sound of the piano. It's uh, weighty when it needs to be, and delicate when it needs to be. All the nuances in this track are communicated quite well. And in the beginning of the track, uh, Ray Brown on the standing bass uh, pulls his bow on the strings and you can feel and hear the tension and the emotion and the music. Uh, and it, it's, it's bass that you can feel low down but the clarity is so good, you can hear the uh, frequency extension go up even to the um, higher mid-range. Uh, it's, it's that cliche word people say, I've, never, I've heard the song so many times, but I didn't realize there was so much detail in this uh, particular piece. I was, that was a real treat to my ears. Uh, fantastic album, guys. If you don't have it, go get yourself a copy of Analog Productions. Next is an Impex First Step. Uh, it's, uh, that's the company that releases uh, vinyl. And it is Patricia Barber's Cafe Blue. Popular album, but I, but I believe this release from Impex uh, First Step is, uh, is new. Um, there is a track here on uh, side four, Nardis, the Miles Davis remake. Um, her voice in the beginning of this track sounds so arabesque, uh, sounds so seductive, in the room gives you goosebumps. And the rest of the song, uh, towards the end of the song, uh, or towards the half of the song, it gets into uh, percussion. In the percussion, you can hear all the air. Uh, your you can uh, your speakers can must up on the uh, on the shimmer and decay of the cymbals, the texture of the snares, uh, the snap rhythm. Um, of uh, the bass drum and the snares, even when it gets busy, the details all there, and it's laid out perfectly, without uh, without any brightness. Even you know the amplifier is new, that class A sound. Uh, it's it's beautifully painted. The the, the sonic picture is beautifully painted. Fantastic soundstage very deep localization of instruments you can visualize them um, they're clear there's uh, not much overlap between instruments they're not piled upon one another they're clear they're spaced out and her voice is fantastic in this one uh, this is also great by guys here's uh, another one this is somewhat of my uh, Classic favorite. It's um, Super Tramps, uh, Brother Where You Bound. Um, great recording again. Um, there's uh, so last song inside B, uh, Better Days. She, as the song opens up, there is this bass note, and I'm telling you, uh, 20 watts at 8 ohms. In a large room like this with efficient speakers it just filled the room and the bass was coupled the room and it's bass you feel it's bass you feel it is not a one note bass it's a very articulate 
uh, with a lot of details and tone uh, and that bass and uh, I think this is Ricky Davis on uh, vocals and uh, keyboards and his voice sounds fantastic in this and this is also an album where a lot is going on a lot is going on comes at you and the detail is uh, laid out quite quite clearly um, very good presentation let's talk about one more one of my favorite vocalists uh, I love this guy Bill Withers the late Bill Withers making music there's a song here uh, on side one, it's called uh, I Love You, Don. And his voice here again, it's mesmerizing. It is so emotive. It is so, it gives you goosebumps. And it's a well-recorded album and this amplifier brings out all the detail and the emotion. And Bill Withers is in your room, guys, with the right speaker the right setup he's in your room and you feel this you feel what he's feeling the love admiration uh, for for this woman that he's singing about it's fantastic and then there's a song right after that it's called she's lonely uh, that has some uh, beautiful guitar effects that have these swirling harmonics uh, that's uh, that's fantastically brought out by the setup. Uh, very enjoyable, uh, very great uh, record to test out your hi-fi system. Um, so yes, I I love this uh, Shet Agier power amplifier. Uh, its wattage output is plenty enough uh, when you're using high efficiency, high efficiency speakers in a large room. Um, I'm very pleased with it. It uh, sounds like a superb high-powered tube amplifier. <laughs> uh, I have uh, some power amps that are uh, an integrated amps that are tubes that run KT150, Tungsol KT150 power tubes. Um, and this sounds like them. It has all that detail and harmonics all in one, no compromise. Uh, clarity, dynamics, sound staging, full sound, and all for a great price. Yes, it's only a power amplifier, you'd need a good uh, pre-amplifier, but uh, Shit Audio also manufactures uh, a few uh, preamps as well, solid state, and I think there is a tube preamp. Hopefully, one of these days, I'll get to match uh, them with this power amplifier and uh, and do a review. Anyway, I thoroughly enjoyed listening and talking about uh, the power amplifier. I hope you did too. Uh, more to come. Please subscribe and like if you like this video. Thank you very much.